Hello and welcome to Elk Camp. This week we're in northern Arizona for an archery hunt. I'm excited to be hunting with first year Zero Hunt Fees member Chris Griego. Chris and I are looking forward to getting out in the woods and calling in some bulls here at Elk Camp. guys well it's September once again we're excited for it this year we just rolled into the unit a couple of days ago and we're out here doing some scouting doing some glassing here this morning different unit than I've been in the last couple of years it's got a reputation for having great bugling although the hunt starts a little earlier this year and um, we've got a full moon at the start of the hunt so that's a little bit of a concern but we'll, we'll see what happens so we're just here kind of picking this country apart with our Zeiss optics this morning. Hoping to see a big bull. Uh, we're excited to have our Zero Hunt Fees member Chris Griego uh, show up here in about a week and uh, hoping for a great hunt with him here at Elk Camp. You know, when I first met Chris Griego, I was very impressed. You know, he was kind of a low-key, understated kind of guy, a little bit like me. Uh, but as we got to know each other, I knew Chris was my kind of hunter. He was very intelligent about his approach. He was very familiar with his equipment. And as he shot his bow at camp, he was dialed in, and we were ready to go out and hunt. I think my expectations going into the hunt were just to, um, you know, I was excited to hunt with Steve. Um, I really wanted to just have a real uh, good rutting action Arizona archery elk hunt. You know, one thing I want to say as you watch these episodes on elk camp, it seems like we're calling in every single bull that we're encountering out there. Um, but that's not really the case. You know, this is public land hunting. Um, there's a lot of pressure out there. Uh, there's lots of people calling at these bulls. The uh, units are very accessible due to good road systems, but that just means that the bulls hear a lot of calls and they get pressured a lot. So that just means we have to do everything right. And you know, on a five or 10 day hunt, we really have to grind it out and do things right to have a handful of encounters with these Arizona bulls.
Elk Camp with Steve Chappell is brought to you by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make the difference. Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We call the game. Zeiss Sports Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. Scree Extreme Mountain Gear. And by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. Elk Camp with Steve Chappell is brought to you by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make the difference. You know, early on in the hunt, we go down to the cedar pinion country, and I really like to call in this country. However, on this particular morning, we had a north wind, and we battled it the entire morning. You know, the elk were coming up from the south, and they had the wind in their advantage, as they typically do and uh, we were just handcuffed and really couldn't move on the elk because the general direction of the wind was just totally wrong for us. You know, by being patient and waiting for the elk to move up and get closer to us, we were finally able to get a nice bull crosswind from us. And at that point, I decided that it would be a good opportunity to set up and try to call him in. You know, although this bull was interested in us and bugled at my cow call several times, he wasn't quite hot enough to cross this real steep, nasty draw to come over and take a look at us, so I knew we were going to have to keep hunting. Well, on this afternoon, early on in the hunt, I was able to get a bull to respond to my location bugle, and we moved in and got close to him. I decided to join Zero Hunt Fees because uh, Steve is an extremely reputable uh, outfitter. Um, I thought he would be great to hunt with and the, um, it just made sense for me to be able to pay a small amount every year and then not have to worry about hiring an outfitter when I eventually drew a tag.
This bull jumped all over my lip ball bugle and came into about 75 yards, but he hung up and started raking a tree. And unfortunately, he wasn't in real good view of the camera. And then after a bit, the wind shifted and pushed this bull away. But it was really exciting for all of us to get to see how this bull reacted to the lip ball bugle. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We call the game. Hey guys, for this week's tip, I want to talk to you about the lip ball bugle, or when I use it more specifically, I like to call it the bull calling cow's bugle. Now I use this call in a scenario where I'm in tight with a herd bull and he's very agitated and very defensive of his herd. And what you're doing is you're soliciting his cows to come over to you and he's not going to let that happen so he's going to come over and look to fight you. So now that you know about this call, let me demonstrate it for you. <coughs> Guys remember you can use the bull calling cows bugle in a scenario when you get in tight with a herd bull and he's very defensive of his cows. Blow it with a lot of aggression and you'll get great results with it. And I want to wish you the best of luck on your hunts this fall. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. Well, as we got a little further into the hunt, I noticed that we were having good success hunting the pines during the afternoons because it cooled off and the bull seemed to start bugling earlier. But we got well into prime time on this particular evening before I got a bull to answer my calls. So we moved in and got inside of what I thought was about 120 yards. I got Chris and Elliot set up. I dropped back behind the call with hopes that this bull would come in and get right up in their face. Steve has definitely has a system that obviously he's you know perfected over the years. He kind of escalates the situation from low to high and kind of takes the bull's temperatures and then and then utilizes whatever triggers that bull. Well, this bull hung around for quite a while within easy bow range. 
trying to figure out where my cow call was coming from and where that real cow might actually be. And to our delight, he even ripped off an aggressive chuckle right there on camera for us. You know, Chris and I really enjoyed getting to watch this bull come in and commit to the calls, but things were about to get a lot more exciting. So stick around with us because after the break, we're going to show you the exciting conclusion to Chris's hunt here at Elk Camp. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Zeiss Sports Optics, confidence in the toughest conditions. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Scree, extreme mountain gear. Well, after trolling around for a bit and blowing some calls, I finally got a bull to answer my location bugle, and so we started moving in and cutting the distance down. And you know, as we got closer in there and I blew some calls, all at once a different bull sounded off more to the right of us and he sounded like a very mature bull, so we thought it would be a good idea to move in his direction and try to check him out.
guys, I'm Chris. Chris shot about 30 minutes ago, and we reviewed the footage a couple of times. It looks like a really good hit, and the way the bull left, we think he's probably already dead, so we walked up here just about 30 yards, and we can see the arrow right here, so come along, and we're going to go get Chris's bull. Let's go get Great him. Good job, Chris. Thanks. <laughs> That's my first archery bull. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. What an exciting scenario, though. I mean, we originally set out after a different bull that was bugling, and then on the way to that bull, we hear this bull bugle. Yep. I couldn't believe he came into the cow calls. Yeah, he was a little hesitant in, in the beginning, and it's because he had cows. Yep. And you called it. I mean, that's how they always act when they have cows. Yep. A lot of times they're a little hesitant. But I almost didn't shoot him, and then decided I was insane and <laughs> called and stopped him on the yeah, way out. Luck he, luckily you, you called him and he, and he stopped one more time and we got a good shot in him. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. Great job again, Chris. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate yes, it. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Elliot, you're a man. Thank you, Lord, for a great hunt. Thank here. you, Lord. Chris. Yes.